anything where I am, you know, telling HR Puff and stuff, my, my troubles and my worries, you know, and we're having a back and forth conversation, you know, and I'm talking to him like he's my therapist. I don't want no kind of drug like that, but you know, them hippies, they love LSD, acid, you know, do all pill popping, all that stuff. They love it. They think it's fun. Oh my life, my If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about the incomparable George Clinton. Anyway, George Clinton was born July 22nd, 1941, in an outhouse in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Child, I passed that on the way home. In fact, remember I told you I had a flat tire? I had to go to one of them uh, uh, gas stations in uh, Kannapolis, okay? But I was like, ooh, I feel safe because this was George Clinton for He said that his mammy thought that she had to go take a doo-doo, okay? Uh-uh, it was him, right? The same kind of way my sister was born, but you know, we gonna leave her out of this, okay? George was the oldest of nine children. His mom was a house cleaner and a babysitter. At 11 years old, his father came and swooped up the kids and moved them all to Newark, New Jersey. Now, while he did, he decided that he wanted to join the gang. And so, no. Okay, because as soon as he saw his friend get killed in front of his eyes, he was like, oh, no, 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 no. I want to make music. I want to make music. Fortunately, he wasn't the type of person to seek revenge and stay in the gang and keep moving forward with it. He was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, them Leos, I'm telling you, you know, they'll pop and put one in somebody, but they're also very nice people. You know, they ain't running to a fight, but they will finish. George Clinton had decided, you know what, I'm going to change my life. Okay, I'm going to give my life over to the barbershop. Mm -hmm. So now he cutting hair and cleaning up in the back room. Okay, guess what else he's also doing in the back room? Singing and selling marijuana out the back door. Now, he is looking at Frankie Lyman while smoking the herbs. Okay, yes, Frankie the Lyman, the one who died from a heroin overdose at like, uh, oh, man, he died. So was it 21 or 22? You know, I don't know why I thought that he died at 15, but he still died very, very young. Too young. George Clinton admitted that there was a lot of money in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because he was selling drugs out the back door. But he felt like he was wasting his time cutting hair. He knew that it was a musical world out there and he wanted to be a part of it. Just like the Frankie Lyman. Now, in 1962, Parliament tried their hand at Motown. Motown? Uh-uh, answer no, okay. You know Bertie Gordy, right? He old full of shit. Anyway, Bertie Gordy was like, no, we don't need you. Because at the time, uh, the parliament was the name of his barbershop group, right? They were all slick, conkalines, you know, doo-wops. Bertie Gordy was like, no, we don't need that. All right, we already got that. We already got the Temptations. Plus, you're not as pristine and perfect and precise as the Temptations. So you out of here, bro, you know. Bertie Gordy don't play no games when he say no. Answer no mean no with the Bertie Gordy. Summer of 1967, Parliament released I Want to Testify and garnered a top 20 hit. So now, okay, Parliament then hooked up with these hippies. Ooh, ooh. And he got introduced to dropping acid. I don't want it. 
I don't want it. Anything that got me in a corner talking to a mushroom, I don't want it. Anything where I am, you know, telling HR Puff and stuff, my, my troubles and my worries, you know, and we're having a back and forth conversation, you know, and I'm talking to him like he's my therapist. I don't want no kind of drug like that. But you know, them hippies, they love it. LSD, acid, you know, do all pill popping, all that stuff. They love that. They think it's fun. They're changing. You know, they even got rid of that polished look, and now they're wearing crocheted hats, bamboo earrings, necklaces, flip-flops. And their sound is changing, okay? They are establishing or trying to um, create a sound similar to Jimi Hendrix's Black Rock. Now, they in clubs working with Ted Nugent, popping more pills, okay? He decided to change the name from Parliament to the Funkadelic. We got a real blah 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 da da da. There's a whole lot of rhythm going round. Don't play with me when it comes down to the Parliament, the Funkadelic, the Afro Puffs. Uh, what else was they called? Uh, you know the Rock'em Sock'em Kids. The uh, man, they had about a hundred names. We'll discuss it later, right? Because G George Clinton was a genius. Until he wasn't. The first two singles got radio play on black stations. But it was their live shows that garnered their incredible reputation. They would jam, they would jam for hours, like go-go's, okay? You know, what happens is um, when you're in a go-go, the music go, 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 go. You don't get a break at all. You know how they have intermissions? They have an intermission, but you better believe in the beginning, there ain't no, uh, we're singing this song right now. Then when that song ends, they be like, oh, yes, yes, Parliament, yes, 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 Funkadelic, yes, yes. No, they keep going the entire time. Them niggas that was playing the drums, arms was strong as shiz. You hear me? But anyway, we're not talking about Go-Go. Yeah. Rare Earth, Gladys Knight, Stevie Wonder were all in the audience, right? Because they were considered the down and dirty group, okay? They were who you saw when you wanted to have a good friggin' time or a, uh, an experience, right? George Clinton and the Funkadelic started noticing that when George would do outrageous things, the crowd would be amazed, astonished, and somewhat scared. This ninja, at this time, he's stripping naked, jumping on top of tables, you know, his ding dong in people's face. That's a problem to me. Get your dick out of my face. I didn't pay to see dick. This was the thing. Clinton signed Funkadelic under the Evictus label using the name Parliament. Okay. None of the band members were signed to any label. That is the great goop. You hear me? The great goop. So, okay. He would play this game of merry go round with the record labels, knowing that he nor his band members were tied to any label. We're going to go to the Arista or wherever they went, right? Look, we're going to, you know, do an album under Arista, under uh, the Afro Puffs. That's not the name. I forget the name. Astronauts. That's what they was going to What's that? Astronauts? Anyway, we're going to do an album with them. We're going to turn around over there and do another album with uh, this label under the name, you know, I don't know, George Clinton and the Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwich, Okay. But that's how he was able to play this merry go round with all these different record labels. It worked until it didn't. Funkadelic were basically the same group that were nicknamed P Funk. That's another name that he signed to another label. But all these people worked together creating these albums. So, to right. piggyback off of what I just explained, okay, he in the studio creating music, a whack of music, because it's a hundred of them. In, you know, P-Funk, Parliament, Funkadelic, you know, the ladies that sing, the horny horns, uh, all these different people, all the different groups inside of one band. They're creating music. And George Clinton is selling it to each label under different names. He would decide which song would go on which album to whatever label. In 1971, he stole a bass player from James Brown. Bootsy Collins, ooh, I wanna be with you, ooh, yeah. Is that Bootsy? If it's not, I know you hussy is gonna be correcting me. Anyway, Bootsy had said that James Brown was too controlling, you know? Bootsy said, I wanted to do my own thing. 
Gotcha, Bootsy. So he left James the Brown. James the Brown, you know, had an attitude. You stole my bass player. Yeah, I stole him, but he felt like he was in chains while he was with you, so you're welcome. Next P-Funk album, America Eats His Young, showcases anger and the disdain that he has with America's disregard for black children. But his first wife, who had four kids by him, oh, he left her there. Okay, okay, I'm leaving you there. And he went on a world tour, planting babies everywhere. George Clinton, you just as bad as America. Black men, you are just as bad as America. You got a problem with how America treats your black children, but aren't you doing the same thing by ignoring them, planting seeds everywhere, and not staying around to nurture them? Child, but you know that's another conversation. They are not mainstream, but they have a following. Young blacks love it, okay? And George Clinton took that as a sign that he had something powerful. As a result, in the early 70s, George Clinton had a vision, you know, because yeah. they couldn't do the hippies. They can't go back to the, you know, the Frank and Lyman. So now everybody's a Martian. So in 1974, one of the groups, all the groups, some of the groups signed to Casablanca Records, right? George Clinton decided to get up on the downstroke. Get up on the downstroke. Hey, everybody get up. Get up on the downstroke. So now I understand why D.C. is called Chocolate City. Did y'all know why D.C. is called Chocolate City? You're welcome, okay? George Clinton came up with the concept that we are going to turn the White House black, okay? Where's the White House? In Washington, D.C. And Washington, D.C. is lovingly nicknamed Chocolate City. Now, it ain't chocolate no more, okay? It ain't chocolate no more, right? But it was just the the embracing of the name that D.C. Uh, represented. Now, the mothership represents the battle between good and evil, funk versus repression. We want the funk. Hey, give us the funk. Ah, we. Oh, my gosh. I love Parliament, y'all. The funkadelic, you know, the funky noses, uh, the big toes, uh, the stinker ears. All them people, yeah, who else in the Afro Puss? Around the same time, Bootsy and George was visited by a space alien, okay? They decided that, uh, you know, that uh, it was a vision, and that means that they needed to move forward. I said that maybe whatever drug they was on gave them the same trip, right? I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that there ain't no such thing as an alien. I'm not going to say that, okay? But what I will say, because we know that Bootsy and George Clinton both popped pills, acid, LSD, you know. They say they was driving around in a car, you know. A Martian appeared on the right side of the car and, and spit on the window and let some kind of junk on the window, you know. George Clinton looked at Bootsy and was like, you need to step on it. Bootsy looked at him and was like, okay, I saw that too. Let's step on it. After that, okay, after they had got visited by, you know, the Martian, they decided to put P-Funk into overdrive, okay? Parliament came out with the clones of Dr. Funkenstein. Bootsy released Stretching Out with the Bootsy rubber band. And Funkadelic released two more albums. I'll make my funk the P-Funk. I want to get funked up. Hey, make my funk the P-Funk. Hey, I want to get funked up. I love that song. I love George Clinton. Now, I would never... You know, get with him. Maybe one of them singing girl backgrounds, but not that George Clinton, because he always looked filthy to me, you know. I can't deal with a man that got orange ribbons in his head. That shit is a turn off. With all their money flowing, the P-Funk crew decided to buy stage props. I remember my mother and my aunt telling me that the Parliament shows or the George Clinton shows or the, you know, the stinky socks uh, shows were the best shows ever. Okay, they bought expensive stage props like a satin Rolls Royce, a spaceship, a big hat, uh, you know, fancy costume. The Afro Knots, that's the name of it, the Afro Knots. The Afro Knots are on tour now with an entourage of 85 people. Nigga, that's some rapper shit. Okay, that's some rapper. Do you know how much money it costs to feed 85 ninjas? Oh my God, and they all on stage taking up space? Now, 
you got to know that because there's so many people involved with the Afronauts, the Parliament, the Funky Toe Jam, uh, the Paper Towel Holders, you know, the Red Lipstick Girls, you know, all those people, you got to know that there's going to be some confrontation. Okay, like I said earlier, George Clinton was the referee. Did I say that earlier? But George Clinton was the person to hold everything together. Of course his ass was high all the time. Of course he was, okay? You know, now I ain't an advocate for doing the drugs, but I get it, right? Because you got to be high to be jamming all the time, okay? While you on the road all the time. George Clinton is working the, you know, the, you know, baking powder, Crew to death. Funk Mob created even more spinoff groups to include the Brides of Funkenstein, the Horny Horns, and the Palais, and a couple of solo projects. Now, Flashlight was the first number one R&B hit for the Funk Mob. Flashlight, red light, neon light. What's beautiful about that number one hit was that that number one hit was knocked down by Bootsy Collin. It's Bootzilla, baby. So you know how people get irritated with Beyonce, you know, because they be like, damn, you know, not so much so now. They ain't irritated with uh, Beyonce so much now, right? But remember when Beyonce first came out, we was like, damn, we always seen this bitch. Is this bitch gonna do everything? Damn, Beyonce. Like putting out songs back to back to back. She was in Cinderella. She was in all kinds. Was she in Cinderella? But anyway, she was everywhere. Understood that you have to capitalize off the momentum, just like Beyonce did. Now she can sit back and chill with her billionaire husband and, um, you know, raise her children. That's what George Clinton did, too. He like, oh, no, I ain't about to stop, okay? Because I don't know when this is going to stop. 1978 was the climax for George Clinton's P-Funk kingdom. They were selling millions. One nation under a groove. Hey, getting down just for the funk of it. One nation, we're on the move. Now, motor booty was operating underwater. I remember my mother trying to explain to me this. I was like, huh? How did they, how did they underwater? Now, this is the thing. Never learn to swim. Can't get the rhythm of the stroke. Now, back home, we had Northeast Groo Groovers create their own rendition of this song. Them niggas was talking about PCP, okay? Because, you know, it's water. I don't know what the hell uh, George Clinton was talking about, but they said the whole show was underwater. I have no idea what that means. Please, y'all, if y'all know what that means, put it down below. Because I'm like, Mommy, how is that possible to put the show underwater? Was it was they in a fish tank? Were they, you know, gurgling while they were singing? Wow. Disco and rock and roll are battling it out on the charts, okay? Parliament is knee deep. Something about you that wants to make me dance. Something about you. I want to get in your pants. Tune in tomorrow for part two. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down, my naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, have a good one. Something about you.